Mum's calling. She's off to the left somewhere. Wow. Oh wow. Absolutely incredible. Here comes the here comes the next cup. This were amazing. Mother and four cubs, this is incredible. What an incredibly lucky morning I'm having. This is the third day in a row now. I just, I just had a bit of a wake-up call. I won't forget it either. I was, uh, I was just following the female down the shore of Sarmiento with her four cubs, and she headed up off the coral and into a flat area towards a copse of trees, which I know quite well. Perfect place to hide. Um, and I was, I'd spent the last sort of half an hour filming her from behind with the cubs and I wanted to get in front. So I cut inland, went right the way round to get in front of her. Um, and she suddenly appeared, came up through the coral on the beach and appeared near the woods, just where I was opening the legs of the tripod. And I thought, her cubs, she sat down and then her four cubs appeared one by one in the shot, walked out of shot and I thought she was going to follow them up the side of the copse. Instead she came in my direction and uh, let me tell you, it was heart skip to beat moment, let me tell you. She was coming at me and I had to stand my ground and raise my voice and waved my hands in the air just to let her know that uh, I was not on the menu. She got the message, uh, but so did I. Um, so I'm about 150 meters away, just having lunch on this rock. And I've got a great view of the cops and she's at the, she's at the north end of the cops now. And a few guanaco have just strolled by, three guanaco, but they're quite a way off and they've got a great uh, field of view in front of them. So she was, she popped her head out and uh, had a look, but she's just now laying down. I can just see her ears and her head through the binoculars. So I'm definitely going to give her some breathing space. That was, um, I was talking the other day to Rodrigo about um, 
how basically myself and a few of these guides can get a little complacent with these cats sometimes because you're here every day you see them on a date well you know three four times a week sometimes every day of the week if you're lucky but you do have to remember that they are natural born killers they're predators they're the top of the food chain here and if you're unlucky you're going to be you're going to be a meal ticket for one of them and i'm just about to check to make sure she's still where she's supposed to be as far as i'm concerned <laughs> You know, the Guanaco are long gone, so she'll probably hang out in here in the hope that a few more will come by later on. Or she might just rest here for a few hours and then take the cubs out later. God, they're beautiful, four of them. I'm so glad that they're all still alive. I was actually really worried the other day when I saw a female with two cubs, basically the same age as this female's cubs, and there were only two of them. And I thought maybe she'd lost two, but um, obviously she hasn't. Where I am at the moment is a very big open area, slightly undulating, but it's got a lot of grass and I'll say it once, I'll say it again. They can lose themselves in this grass like you wouldn't believe. It really does scare me sometimes just how well camouflaged they are. She's hungry, she's got four cubs to feed, and uh, I don't plan on being part of her diet today or any other day, so I have to pay attention.
this is amazing absolutely amazing but you know what while they're playing I am frantically scanning Cub number two, cub number three, cub number four. All present and correct, how beautiful. I think she might take them into the tall grass, to the woods off to my right. Maybe she's had enough of me. We'll soon find out. Cubs have all headed right, but I dare not move. She's on her way to all. I'm a little bit nervous, to put it mildly. I'm just going to go up a couple of dozen metres up this hill to check that the female's not gone out the back of the copse of wood where she's left her cubs and is stalking me. I can see one cub, but uh, the copse of trees here offer. This is all dead wood here, but she's in a copse of. Uh, Lenga, Koiwe, whatever, they've lost all their autumn colours. But they're just in front, and the last place I saw the female was there, and then I moved across here. And now we're back to one cub laying under a small tree that's got a broken branch, so it's, she's easy to spot. But uh, just for peace of mind, here a few meters just to check. That really scared me earlier on, I must admit. I was, uh, she was on the edge of that copse of woods and instead of following her cub she came towards me. It was, it was a bit of a blast to the system. It was like having six espressos and four Red Bulls enter your system at once. Let me tell you, my heart skipped a beat and it was like, okay, get ready to uh, get ready to move that tripod in front of you and uh, hopefully, well, it didn't come to anything, but I must admit, I was ready to swing that tripod if, any, if she came towards me. Let me tell you. The lights, the lights gone might not look like it through this GoPro now but uh, I think I pushed myself as far as I could today with the female and four cubs and uh, I really didn't want to overdo it you just never know when you're gonna make a mistake or she's gonna the, the female or the male puma in question is gonna have enough of you and I think I spent quite enough time with them today cubs were incredibly obliging I've that will go down as my my best days filming without a doubt that was incredible behavior to not just to see but to actually photograph and film it but uh, if the sky would have been clear I would have stayed a little bit longer but there was cloud building up and coming over the piney massif and although it might not look like it now you just never know it changes around here so quickly and I didn't want to get caught out because I am on my own and uh, although I'm on the road and it's relatively safe being on the road you just never know so and I can't complain about what I filmed today days just don't get any better than that the only thing I'm really missing with regard to these mountain lions is an actual takedown of a guanaco and you know the day before yesterday uh, sorry no it, well, yes it was the day before yesterday when I saw the puma launch itself and filmed its backside and its tail disappearing through the mist in the direction of two extremely, extremely fast guanacos. That was, it almost got it, but obviously, but we have other days. We've still got a 
about six weeks left of filming permission. CONAF, I think, are very kindly going to give me an extension because I had uh, this problem with my lungs, this pneumonitis, pneumonia, for a couple of weeks and I couldn't film, so I'm quite well in with them, so I'm sure they'll oblige and one or two people have told me they will, so. But uh, what an extraordinary day. And now I'm going to light the fire, I'm going to read a book, I'm going to have a nice glass of Chilean red wine and I'm going to go to bed early after I've looked at the footage of course. I feel like I've been dragged to Argentina and back, but it was worth it.